Crystal Jordan, be honest with myself, Kevin Davis. We are Music Love Life. And welcome to another episode. Let's go ahead and get into it because a lot happened this past week and uh, it's a lot to talk about. Yeah, that's how I feel. Okay, well, get started then. <laughs> oh, okay. You rub your hands again. Like, I, I mean, where do you start? Meek Mill is out. Uh, J. Cole album drop. Yeah. Uh, and Waffle House is losing a mother of minds. So, can we also, I would just love to take a moment to acknowledge that, um, oh man, I lost my train of thought. Um, Kendrick won a Pulitzer, Pulitzer? Prize. Pulitzer Prize. Isn't that amazing? Huge. Hey man, Huge. affirmative action. First of all, I didn't even know that that was possible. Affirmative, affirmative action. <laughs> Black people won't even think about Anything a is Pulitzer possible. Prize, That is period. ridiculous. Which one? Which part? I'm not going to let you do Name that. another album that Black got people Pulitzer. Black think about I, no I, Pulitzer That's what I'm saying. So may, no, but it's I'm never just saying. Won one. Do you think Damn deserved a Pulitzer over a lot of other albums that came out? I'm not saying Damn was a bad album, but this is the one. That's affirmative action. Come on, man. They were like, you know what? You're, you're like, tuned see, up. Like, you're tuned up and ready to go. Anyway. They're like, black people need to win. You All right, are tuned right, up. No, that is not. That is <laughs> not. Just warming up. No, that is black not. Black people need to win. We're going to give them this Pulitzer. That's never been done. Come on. It's never been done. Cardi B is fucking co hosting Jimmy Fallon, <laughs> and this dude wins a Pulitzer for a rap album. But it was a very, very impactful rap album. More so that than was Good Kid, Mad City? Civil Disobedient. It's kind of like the. It was a, a great. Yeah. More so I than How to Come a Butterfly? Uh, you see what I'm saying? I don't want to go down that path because that's a conversation in its own. Okay, it really is. Like which which Kendrick album is best? I still rock Section 80 personally. Me too. But you know, but 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 are you saying that the content wasn't more socially conscious? Damn. No, all of his shit is. I socially know, conscious. but I'm just saying the timing. I don't know. I just think the timing, especially with con- well, considering what's been going on. <laughs> Next year, Cardi's gonna get that Pulitzer. No, she's you know what not. Nah, no, son. She's Nobel not. Peace nah, Prize. Son. Cardi I B. I do enjoy Cardi's album. <laughs> what else happened? I am riding with Cardi. Shout out what to Kendrick happened? for winning the no, Pulitzer Prize. No, shout out for real. That's, that's, that's dope. Stop saying affirmative action. That's affirmative action. Oh my but god. But that's dope though. That's we bullshit. we deserve to win. We needed a win. Write him angry letters. Please send emails. That's ridiculous. No, it's not. No, it's not. We're you not. know that that's come on. You know that's a stretch. A Pulitzer Prize? Come on, that's a stretch. Hey, guys, is that is that a Confederate flag? Do you know anything on, else that's on, won a Pulitzer Prize? Do I know what? Anything else that's won a Pulitzer Prize? No, rap album? None. Any? No, anything. Period. Do you? Anything else that happened? <laughs> Do you? No, I don't. <laughs> okay, so we just do you? It. I know in the I rap album yo. you have nothing to compare it to. I just know that that rap albums don't win Pulitzer prizes, but now but they do. Maybe they should. Time to take. What do you mean the they fact? don't? Poetry? Maybe they po- don't. I know literature. According to them, they do. Literature. Literature and rap is a form of photographs. Literature. Maybe. Rap is a form of and photographs, yes, but it is a form of the one, artistic expression. I do know expression. something. The little kid who was like bent over and the, and the vulture was waiting on him to die, that won a Pulitzer. I do have something to compare it to. Damn is not as impactful as that photograph. Not to me. Yeah, I think it is to a lot of people. Okay, well, you know. Okay, all right. Affirmative. I'm saying affirmative, not affirmative action. Like affirmative, like yes. What other bullshit I'm happened I'm affirming this week? it. Oh, um, Prince. Um, they show the video of him dead or whatever, like. No, no. There was an article came out that said that Prince didn't know that he was taking the drugs that he was taking, and they decided not to pursue charges. <laughs> like what? What do you mean he didn't know? Opium, he didn't know he was taking opium. that drug. He right. knew he was taking drugs, but it's just not that drug. Right. Okay. It's like it's like say you were issued a prescription. Right. And you're taking these pills, right. but they're not actually pill- the pills that it says on the bottle. Right. And then that's why uh, you're no longer with us. And, uh, and then no one is, like, no one's held responsible. No one's accountable. It's just, eh, well, he's already gone, so uh, fuck it. Uh, I mean, nah. That's some bullshit. They charged Michael Jackson's doctor, so I think that if they had something to... But I think they need to have proof. I don't know. There was a... I, I can't... I, I, I didn't realize we were talking about this, but there is another artist, a white female artist, that did a did an interview about Prince, and a lot of people said that he was, you know, doing extra. He had an extracurricular lifestyle. Regardless of what, we just need to let him rest in peace and let him what, what extracurricular. Mean? Man, this is Prince. Drugs. Oh, 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 this is Prince in the eighties. 
Prince in the nineties. Prince in the two thousands. I'm Prince just saying, let, let him let, just let him let him rest in peace. Let him live. You better let say, him, <laughs> let him rest in peace. Where we just let him let rest that in dead peace. man live. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> let him right. Let him rest. I saw a weird video that I I don't even know why this is news. Why people do this kind of stuff? But I guess somebody took a, a a video of his house or his place. So he's on the ground and outside of his oh elevator, and they're blocking out him so you can't see him. Oh my but then God. they're just like panning around the whole room and like showing the people who are walking around or whatever. And Prince is just laying there dead on the ground. They got him blacked out though. So every time he comes around to there, right it's in front black, of the elevator, black. it's just like a black circle. And then they move it around. And it's like it's. I don't know why is that news. I don't know. What the hell were you watching? <laughs> it's a video on YouTube. It's on YouTube. Oh, but you don't know about the Pulitzer Prize, but you do know about this. I know right. that Dan okay. won a Pulitzer Prize, and I'm so proud <laughs> that black people now win Pulitzer prizes too. Well, black people have always won. Name, Pulitzer name another prizes. black Pulitzer Prize winner. I mean, obviously Martin Luther King. That was easy. Obviously, I'm gonna Google some shit. And you know, Kendrick and, and Martin and Martin Luther. They have a lot in common. They They're do. leaders of their people. They're both short. They're both black. What else? You are offensive, and I refuse. How to... is that offensive? Short is offensive. No, it isn't. That is black not is what offensive? they have in common. What do they have they in were common? Both leaders and people are impacted. Kendrick Lamar is a leader. I do. I think he's a leader. Okay. Yeah. <sighs> I think the fact that he makes music that t tells a story and uh -huh. empowers people, because people don't necessarily we're we're not in the same age of where people want to go hear pastors preach. Rap artists or people that are in the in the celebrity, um, I guess, sphere are seen as the the, the influencers. So yeah. that does allow him to be a more impactful person. I saw a video of Chance again trying to make people believe he's a Christian rapper. Have you, do you believe he's a Christian rapper? He keeps trying though. Who? Chance. He, Chance the rapper. He keeps saying I'm a Christian rapper. He like he's trying to make us believe it. Do you believe that? I, mean, I, I believe I'll, you I'll can't. I'll buy how do you it, tell what? So is Lecrae. Well, Lecrae is 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 gospel. It's been gospel forever. He but, won a stellar award too, right? Yeah, Didn't but I but I don't but think you difference? can say that he's. What? How can you say that he's not? If that's what he sees himself he's, as, he's just a rapper. How can I mean, you say you know, he's not. Why? Why? Did, didn't Kanye win a, a Google? Uh, a, what? Didn't Speaking Kanye, of Kanye win a Google? Oh, like some type what? of award for <laughs> Google? I almost said I don't know why I said Google. I just, you said it twice because I was googling. I did. Oh. <laughs> but didn't Kanye win something for Jesus Walks? Uh, I don't know. Some type of it wasn't a gospel award. Not a gospel award. But speaking yeah. of Kanye, have you guys have you seen Kanye's rants? He's 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 about on social Trump media or whatever. No, he's he's talking about everything. He's no. just sharing. See, he's this is sharing what I'm saying. There's so much shit going on, man. Like, Kanye, he, he had a new. He has new fashions coming out. He's making new shoes. I am excited about a. Nas album produced by Kanye. Yeah, he mentioned who that he was chopped samples. Yeah, as a he said hand. I am he said he's by chopping that. by hand the samples <laughs> for I, Nas. I do think that could be. I mean, I hope a new Pusha T. I I'm like whatever Nas that. does. Yeah. I like whatever Nas does, and at Tiana Taylor, like he has a whole. Mm -hmm. He's just been working. He's been working. Hopefully. You know, this will help him, but he's still Kanye. He's still like he's been tweeting. I think they say he tweeted 112 times in a few days. It's Must just be information. Coming. Yeah, that's that's what that's what people are like. Okay, he wants you gone. He has an album coming out, and he also has some new shoes, some new clogs. Oh yeah, that are like 50, yeah, yeah, Yeezy version of the clogs, clogs yeah. that are like fifteen hundred dollars. Oh yeah, clogs <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Really? Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Y'all gonna buy the, some too. I'm not gonna buy yeah. them. Have the Yeezys. He hasn't made a pair of shoes that haven't been expensive. Or ugly well, as duh. fuck. I mean, he's not gonna nah, make shoes that are expensive. The Nike ones was fresh as hell. Mm. Kanye I, wants I, to I like compete those. with Louis Vuitton, so he's never gonna make anything that's not ridiculously expensive. Didn't he have some Louis Vuittons? He did. He did. Yeah. He did. Mm -hmm. He did. He did. But yeah, but you guys check check out his Twitter feed. It's live. It's on popping. Yeah, I think all the I think the music begins to drop like the end of May, so and then it goes through the summer. Sense. It should be interesting. Yeah, should be good. I'm <sighs> still listening to Cardi B. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That ring record is a smash. Yeah, I like, that's my favorite record on the right on the on the album. So I know you definitely sent us the video of the the young lady in the uh, Waffle House. With the police officers. Right. We were talking about that. We were talking about that in chat, the three of us. And 
I, first of all, I, I just it's yeah, it's Waffle sad. House ain't safe no more. Well, let's explain. Let's explain what happened for the people who haven't seen it. So, okay. Okay. So and you, and matter of fact, I'll post it to our social media as well. So you can go to you know at Music Love Life Show, and you know you'll be able to find it there. But the video that's going around is of a woman being arrested at a Waffle House. Um, it, the video opens and you'll see her like sitting in a chair and police is like standing over her and kind of grabbing her like around. Looks like they were grabbing her arm or, or something around close to her waist. Right. And then the next thing you know, they are on the ground wrestling and it's two officers and they're like. It, it, to me, it looked like they were like tearing her dress off because she had one of those dresses where like the shoulders are exposed and it was just kind of here. So her breasts come out. Um, yeah. And so when I first saw the video, I didn't really know what to I didn't know how to receive it. I was like, OK, why the hell are they wrestling with her? What's going on there? Why were they called in the first place? And then I found out some backstory was that she was in Waffle House, and I guess she got her order to go and was being charged extra for the plastic wear. So she told them, mm, nah, this, y'all don't charge for plastic wear. Take this off. And they said, well, yeah, we are. And she said, okay, well, I want to see a manager. And so she sat down and waited for the manager to come. And instead, they called the police. So instead of the manager showing up, the police. she met police. Well, I just want to say that that's, Kevin told a very different story than what I saw when I watched the video. Okay. I, she did have on a, a topless dress. Um, and as most females know, if you have on a topless dress, especially if you're not wearing a bra, you know, your girls and the outside world are not, there's not much between them, you know, especially depending on how low cut the um, the top is. So at the point that you start to go back and forth with someone with a, with a dress on that's topless, I didn't see the officer pull her breast out. I felt like that was just a casualty of war of what was happening. But um, I did feel like it looked inappropriate because she she didn't, it wasn't just a topless, it was very small. She had on a, it was short because when she was sitting down and you see the officer trying to get her to stand up and she ref, she's refusing, um, you can see that she's kind of covering herself, but that's what she came dressed, you know, to the Waffle House in. And then when we learned about the fact that I guess they were charging her for plastic wear, at the point that she didn't want to pay for it, in my opinion, and we didn't see everything that happened after after that. But in the video, her friend is saying, let's just go. Let's just go. She doesn't want to go. She wants to f- prove her point, and which is why they, you know, obviously they call the police. Because even when the police are there and the police are like, no, you're going to get up. She, her friend is like, girl, let's just go. Let's just go. Let's just go. She's going back and forth. Now, the part that bothered me, I think both sides are wrong. The police, there's a statement where the police says, I'm going to, I'm about to break your arm. That bothered me. And I felt like because she did have on something that was very revealing, the police officers, in my opinion, should have called out a female officer. If you go to the airport and you go through um, this motion detector, they do a, they'll pat you down as a female, but because you are a female, they'll bring over a female person to pat you down. Trust me, I've had some very intrusive pat downs, but it's by a female because that just it just doesn't look right for a male to be doing that. So I felt like I don't feel like she didn't they didn't need to do that because obviously with her friend saying let's just go, she wanted a, a manager and she was not being cooperative, right? Because she was upset. I think a restaurant has, in my opinion, if I say I'm charging you for this and you say no, and I say this is how this is how we do business and you don't want to and you're being loud, then I think that you do have the right to call the police. I think when the police got there and they saw the situation, I don't know if there's some type of protocol, I don't know, but it seems like for two men to be on the ground wrestling with a woman that's almost naked, it... Uh, 
it just doesn't look. look right. Yeah, I don't think they were pulling her dress off. I think she had on a very revealing dress, but I don't think, and I think m- m- what bothers me is the statement, I'm about to break your arm. To me, that's a, that was that was that let me know that he was not he was going above and beyond his job, and that was inappropriate. I don't think he said I'm about to break your arm in that in that nuance. I think he was saying more along the lines of, "Put your hands behind your back, otherwise I'm gonna break your arm." Like the way that he was pulling her and the way she was trying to get away. If he moved her arm behind her back, it was gonna break. Not because he's trying to break it, but because she's not allowing him mm-hmm. to put her in handcuffs. Which is what his job is. Right. So I think more along the lines. If you listen back again, try to listen to it with my lens. Mm-hmm. And I think he was more, it was more along the lines of you're going to give me no option but to break your arm because you're going to go in cuffs. And that was my thing. Is once the police get there and they say you're under arrest, the fight is over. Right. I think she should have got. A, I agree with you as far as that's concerned. But I do think. You know, it just, because like I said, we know when, when you're going through security, whenever there has to be physical contact between a male and a female, and I know this is going to get blown in proportion because now we have so many different definitions of what is male and what is female. So, <laughs> I don't know. No, we don't. Now, I wasn't even thinking about that. But I just started thinking like people are going to be like, well, what if an officer arrests a transgender a tra- woman? A trans- oh, still oh, oh, going. But I just think that, you know, for her, it it was it looked inappropriate, so that was my thing. But I agree with you in the fact that at the point the officer says get up, even as her friend was saying, let's just go, right? Just enough. And I think a lot of times, especially now, you do have people. It makes it un- unfair for the people that really are being um, unjustly arrested and, right. and taken advantage of when you're just trying to be a, a no, a, you know, difficult and prove a point. If you don't want to pay for the silver, leave. But but what Kevin said doesn't make any sense. I mean, I know that's the story, but it, that, that doesn't make any sense to me. Mm-mm. So she didn't like the amount of she was getting charged. So he said, "I need to talk to a manager. And I'm going to sit down." That doesn't that doesn't sound like somebody who gets the police called on them. Well, no, but we can read between the lines on that because even again, in Alabama, when the police, no, still, I, come on, man, not all the time, Alabama. no, come on, all the time. Yeah, though, yeah, Kevin, I don't like you sitting down. Like, come on, man, that's not why she's the police being were loud called. and being belligerent. She the was police officer said you've been dropping s bombs since he got since he yeah. got there. She was dropping. She F-bombs. was obviously being belligerent. See, I don't. I, I didn't see that part. I didn't see that in the video. I didn't even hear. Well, you're talking about her friend said. Well, let's just go. I didn't hear, I didn't hear that. I did. You, if you go I didn't back, hear that. we'll play it because I that's that was the part that stuck out to me. Because wow. I've been with a girlfriend that's doing too much. And, like, let's just and get I'm out like, of here. Yeah. come on, I don't, I don't. They're you know, blinded by rage. They're, so or they're just. Point, they just, just like, are looking for an opportunity to act a fool. You know what I mean? I have a girlfriend that is, you know, I know is like that. And if somebody, uh-uh, but it, it just, it, it's automatically going to go there. So that is, she says that twice when the police are pulling her. And what is happening is the police are trying to get her to stand up and she's pulling back, which of course makes her dress start to come down because she's resisting arrest. It's, it's, it's simple. And I, I'm, I'm not saying that this, this is like a, a touchy subject because obviously people are arrested unfairly. There are, that happens and it happens far too often to us as African-Americans. My problem is if you're acting a fool, you're causing, you're causing it to kind of the, the lines to be blurred. You're part of the problem because when someone is actually really arrested Unfairly, right. people are far. It's kind of like the boy who craw- cried wolf. <laughs> people are far too um, too lax because they're like, yeah, well, they always are crying wolf. And really, that is not- amazing. I was about to read you guys a fucking story. Look at this. I was about to read a story, and I'll tell you wow. what the title of it was. <laughs> and I was going to try to get you to tell me if that's not boy what black people wolf. are doing these yeah. days. And yeah. it literally, listeners, it was the boy who cried wolf. I was going to read that story and see if y'all could see any parallels. But I read it the other day. I just went back and read it. Yeah, It is crying wolf. Here's the crazy part about, about this, this woman. Did she deserve to get arrested for being charged the wrong amount and being upset about it? Of course not. Right. But once they say you're under arrest... It doesn't matter anymore. Name a time. Let's let's. I always apply things to sports. Name a time when a ref calls foul on somebody and they get mad and they argue that they reverse the foul. Now you get a tick. Exactly. It never goes the other way yeah. once the foul is there. Right. Once they blow the whistle, it doesn't go back. And now there's a bitch ass ref. Now and, ma- and now and maybe now maybe yeah. me and you will talk and the ref will be like, hey, okay, I got you next time. That was right. a little, that was a little messed up. Right. But since you didn't complain, we good. I understand. I did wrong. I'm gonna take care of you later. That happens. 
The same thing happens with cops. Sports and I have friends. I have friends who have been arrested mm-hmm. and they got let go later because right. they weren't belligerent. Because the cop, the cop is the first thing they're they're trying to do is figure out who called the police, mm-hmm. defuse the situation, and that may initially be you're under arrest. Come sit in my car. Right. We're gonna run your license. We're gonna see what's going on. Mm-hmm. Oh, you've never been in. You've never been in a police car ever before. Come on, let's talk this out. That can happen. But it's not going to happen if you're like, no, I'm not getting up. No, fuck y'all. Fuck this. this I'm not paying more money. Y'all, I'm going to see a motherfucking manager or whatever it was right. that she did. I don't, right. I, we okay. didn't get to hear any of that. But once they say you're under arrest, get the fuck up. And put, It's not going back the other way. You have two choices. Get arrested or get the right. shit beat out of you and get arrested. Right. Those are the choices. And Unless you know what, I'm going to say this. As a man, it did not sit well with me to see her being handled in that way. Well, it probably would not sit well like, with I'm you tripping. for her not to get her ass up. How do you handle don't... a woman? Have, have you ever been in a fight with a woman where a woman is being completely ridiculous with you and you're having to compose yourself because you don't want to hurt a woman, but at the same time, she's not giving you much room to not be forceful? Have you ever been in that situation before? Mm-hmm. So how did you handle it? You can't leave now because cops can't leave. So it's not you can't just go out saying right. I'll be back later. Right. Like they have, they have to do. Has something. Has anyone considered that maybe we should have female cops handle females? Yeah, but we, we if the call comes in, it's to cop who's closest. We don't got time to wait on Betty. She's way across. They town. can wait on Betty because they they can wait on Betty. If you go to an air, I have sat at an airport and waited because they had to bring a woman over to. That's different. Me. Yeah, you, but you know what? You ever been you ever been arrested? Uh, yes. Has you ever been arrested by a female cop? No. You ever been like ticketed by a female cop? Maybe. Maybe. If you, you do you feel like like women cops and women cops have short men syndrome because yeah. they they feel like they have to overdo it to compensate for their femininity or they want you to take them seriously. Some, or some whatever do. I agree. It might be. I agree. I'll give you that. So um, in in terms of that, but that's not this situation. But what I'm saying is though. The only reason why it got like that was because she was not willing to do what she had to do. She had to get up and put her arms behind her back. That's it. Does what I'm saying is once you're under arrest, there is no other thing. You're gonna get up and you're gonna put your arms behind your back. If you don't, whatever happens after this is not my fault. It's your fault. That kid who just got um convicted of like 65 years in prison. He was 15. Did y'all hear about that? Mm-mm. He was 15, and him and another guy. Uh, robbed somebody's house or whatever. Oh, I did got into a that. shootout with the cops. The cop kills the older guy who had mm-hmm. the gun. The younger guy got charged with his murder. Yeah, I did hear that. And he's going, yeah. 65 years. Damn. And that's wrong. Of course, that's some crazy shit because he was a 15-year-old, first of all. Yeah. Second of all, the cop killed his, his friend. He was in, in way he, over his head. <laughs> right. But the thing is, though, is once that arrest goes down, it doesn't matter. At this point now, it's all on you. And that's by law, it's on you. You're the reason why this fracas is happening. You're, you're the reason. Fracus. You're the reason why your titties are out on the fucking floor, and I would never suck those titties again ever, ever. How did you bring that? Do you know back? what kind of grease is on a waffle? Have you ever? You know when you walk in Waffle House at four a.m. after the club, it's slide. You slide. Her titties are that now. Her titties her got that titties slide on. It is like a Burger King them. kitchen. Never. I would never <laughs> suck her titties ever again. Oh my God. I didn't even think about those well, that titties. Video, are I mean, ruined. that video, that video <laughs> has just gone viral. And uh, Waffle House actually, well, from what I've seen, the Waffle House says that they felt like the uh, police arrest was appropriate. Good. Um, <laughs> I'm not saying good. I am good. I don't, I'm, I'm not going to say that. But I do want to, I do want to learn more about the situation. Like I said, it's still growing. And I think right now, in terms of stories, I think that that story has really taken a back seat to the Waffle House killer who, uh, or excuse me, Waffle House shooter that killed uh, a bunch of people Negative. at Waffle House <laughs> in Nashville. Which, crazy enough, that was like, when I used to live in Nashville, that was your like Waffle House? five minutes away from my home. <laughs> yes. Wow. Literally, like, you could have thrown a rock and got there. Like, wow. That wow, that, that, dumb that's close. a that was a that was a horrible story. But I think another we were also texting about that. And I don't want to I don't want to I know a lot of listeners. I think I don't want to seem like someone who's not proud of her race, and I am. But I think that we have to be realistic. Everything is not a racial issue, right? You know what I mean. So that guy, he had a lot of problems. He was mentally wrong. The police were wrong when they did not, they took his guns and gave them back to his father, which is how he got the guns. But I don't necessarily think 
that the problem is a racial one. I think he was just a crazy, deranged person who had issues. He was trying to go up to the White House and and, and do stuff. Even if he didn't like black, he probably didn't like a lot of people. He was just a crazy. He had mental issues. You know what I mean? So do you think? The, yeah. Do you think the black yeah, woman? You think the black woman Waffle House thing is racial? Also, I mean, are are you comparing those? I two? don't know if it's. I don't know if that's racial or not. What I do know is that we can't every we can't pull the race card every time, or it won't, or when it's necessary, because there are a lot of times that it is necessary. It loses its impact if every time something happens to a black person, we say, "Oh, that was race racist," or it's a racial. P- Issue, it was race related. Then we, then we, then we lose the impact when those things really are because yeah. there are so many things that are just. It just happened to be a black person and a white person. If if a black guy is dating a white girl and the white girl, you know, hits him upside the head and is like, "Forget you," it, it doesn't mean that she did that because he was black. It just could be they're fighting and that they're, you know, it, it, it's not always. Black and, versus and, and white. And you know what? We're we're also talking about two different situations. The the girl on the floor with the policeman, I don't know that that was racially motivated. I don't know that he would have been there had they not been called. I don't know if the Waffle House manager was of the same or of a different race. Yeah, the, it, right? it, it could have been somebody just like, this loud chick is causing trouble. I don't want to deal with that. Can, can I say, can I qualify why I said good that Waffle House is not backing down? Mm-hmm. This is what I felt like Starbucks should have done as well. Waffle House is not, mm-hmm. they're, why, why are they responsible for her coming in and doing that and then the police coming in? Like like you said in the very beginning, if somebody's belligerent and loud in a the restaurant, they deserve to have the police called on them. You, you said right, that. I agree. So I'm saying good because we called the police for a reason. There was a reason we called it But I don't out. think Starbucks, I don't think the Starbucks situation was the same, which is why I think Starbucks apologized because it is their policy. It's not. To allow people That's to. That's not true. Their policy actually is you buy some if you want to use the bathroom. That's actually their policy. Yeah, but people, but it, it is, and, and they've even mm. said there, it is. That's a, their policy. It, to use the bathroom, but people right. sit in Starbucks all you the time without. You website? No, listen to what I'm saying. You saw that? Where did you, where did you find that? That's what, that, that's. Because they're not saying that. They're they're not saying that is what that. they said. That was, I read that in some article. I read that in a news oh, okay. article. Okay, but there's also that's their articles policy. when you when you mm. use the bathroom, you have to be a paying customer to use the we bathroom. We use the bathroom. They, but that's, one of them, but they also one of them said, tried to use the bathroom. That's how it all started. I thought. No, that, I didn't. I'm, I'm really sure. Maybe I should read really? back again. I think that it started because one of them got up to use the bathroom. They're like, we don't allow non-paying customers to use the bathroom. I could be completely wrong, but that's what I read. Maybe it was. Uh, I thought it was because they were they called because they were sitting and they were they they said they, they were loitering. Yeah, they hadn't ordered anything. Right. That was how. But and 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 Starbucks did say there actually was something that went out because because Starbucks said they're doing a whole race relations thing. They're but they said that they they still want people to be able to feel comfortable coming in Starbucks even if they have not paid for anything. So they did say that. Now you're right. They do ask you before you use the bathroom, some of them, because there's 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 it depends on management. And I don't think that's wrong. There are a lot of restaurants where you have to buy something in order to use the bathroom. Yeah, I- Waffle I mean, House is not wrong. But I don't but and- I don't think I think Starbucks it was wrong. Waffle House, I I think that that was totally different than what happened in Starbucks. Those those guys were not doing anything. They were not being belligerent. They were not causing a scene. They were not cursing anyone out. Other people in the store were sitting there saying they haven't done anything. Why have you called the cops? That was the, the general consensus from everyone in the store at that time. This girl is loud, even on the short video. And even when the police have her, I don't care what's going on. As a female, I don't want to be on the ground. So I just, you know, the I don't idea either. that you got to keep... As a man, right, as a I'm just like, who wants to be On like, a fucking get, Waffle House, I'm ruined if I touch that floor. You're not being harassed if someone is arresting you for something that you started right. as a, and you decide, I'm going to make them get me in order to... And then a lot of people play up things for cameras because they're thinking at this point... I'm going to get a lawsuit. I'm going to show them. And that's the wrong attitude. And that's what, to me... That's why I said, good, Waffle House. Good job. But you know... Back up see, your people. Okay, so... Well, I, and I'll, I'll get to the, the shooter later. But it seems like... I don't know what what's going on right now, but there's a number of restaurants that are in, in the news right now for denying a person of color uh, service for one thing or another. Right? At Starbucks, it was you hadn't ordered anything. But we come to find out that the manager literally called the police two minutes after they had been there. Um, At Starbucks, that's how it went? Two minutes. Oh, wow. That's crazy. 100 and... 20 seconds. 20 yeah. seconds. You're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> well, you said it before. I, I was going to stretch it out. Oh, but, my bad. It's dramatic yeah. effect. Say it again. <laughs> the moment has passed. Okay. Yeah. 
But two minutes. So right. she didn't take long at all. The Waffle House stuff, maybe she was loud. I didn't hear we that. We just didn't see enough perhaps. of the video. Right. And, and it was I a just, short video. From the and, fact that she's sitting there not wanting to get up and he's telling her to come on, he he seemed like he was out of his, mm-hmm. he was just in a bad situation. I heard there was another incident at Cracker Barrel. Not surprised. <laughs> come on, man. Cracker Barrel. <laughs> hey, man. First the of all, no one, over, no one over 40 is eating in Cracker Barrel usually. Cracker Under Barrel. or over? Under. Oh, okay. Cracker Bell is usually reserved for the, for the. Um, There's families there with kids, but not no no young people are going on their own. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I I you know it's it's <laughs> unfortunate, and I don't think anyone deserves. I hate to see situations like that. I would just say we we have to be, we have to be mindful of which incidents we choose to throw our support behind, so that we don't get people pandering for attention. When situations are not racial, you know, it's just you have a bad attitude or, and I'm not, I don't, we didn't see any more of the video, but I'm just saying like. She didn't have a bad attitude once they were there, but I have, I have a, a sneaky suspicion that before those, that camera <laughs> went on, she was cussing. And she that's was, probably why we don't have real. any of the even camera. The star, even the Starbucks incident, that the, at face value, it doesn't seem racial. Right, but it did they because you had so many anything. people saying, "What did they do?" Right, they That's didn't do when anything. It becomes that when all the uh, hell I've sat in Starbucks, mm-hmm. hadn't ordered anything, and no one's called the police on. But me. is that? But like, right. why is that make it okay? But they, for whatever understand. reason, for whatever reason, that manager had been excuse me singled out those two particular patrons. Maybe right, maybe or maybe everybody else there bought something. Could have been. Mm. Maybe everybody else there bought something. As I said, well, everybody as I said before, else happened to be there, and they said they didn't do anything. Include buy something. We didn't buy anything. We were just they here chilling. That. They didn't no, say that. No, man. They didn't say that. That Starbucks they is known that. for people pulling up. That Starbucks is known with for their it. laptop. Listen, man. You know, if, if I if I own something. a fucking business and I tell you go, just go. I don't have to. It's not racist. It's not. It's whatever I say because it's my shit. If I say go, just go. Why are every, is everybody so fucking hard headed? No, I don't, <laughs> no. You can't tell me to go. It's America. I have rights. No, you don't. This is my fucking property. You don't have rights. Go now. You decide <laughs> Jeez, whether you want to be go. on the ground at fucking Waffle House with grease all over your titties. And then, and, but then <laughs> You're it really becomes a why for the titties, you, titties, aren't you? And, and this is where it becomes. This is where it becomes <laughs> racial because the question becomes. Why did you single me out? Prove that, my nigga. Prove that. Why did you single me out? Prove that. If I kick you out my my business, prove that I did it because you're white or because you're Iranian. Prove that. You can prove that, though. No, you can't. Prove that. (laughs) Well, it's circumstantial (laughs) evidence. If there's 40 white people in the room saying those guys didn't do anything, why did you pick them? You didn't hear what they did. When they came up to the counter, he said something to me. You didn't hear it. I, it you prove that. No, that's right. not. You make up bullshit. You make up bullshit. But we all know what. Oh, make up bullshit. Of our, yeah, you mean like everybody that's he complaining said something about to something? Me, but you didn't Here's hear the it. thing: it's my business. Get the fuck out. Jeez. Case closed. I'm calling the cops if you don't leave. Oh, you're staying? Okay, the cops are coming. So I'm, all this other stuff, it doesn't even your, matter. We're not coming to your establishment. Whatever don't establishment come to my shit. you have, your service don't come. Sucks in we're not, not even coming. getting 120 fucking your seconds. Your service sucks and the food is <laughs> as shit. Soon as I, no, my and food I is bomb. I feel like there's a Confederate flag outside just a wave. Really? Just outside of what? Of your establishment. You oh, you mean the the hypothetical one? Yes. Why the fuck would a Confederate flag be out there? Because you got. I just don't like you. I love black. You better like own. You. you better own like a rude restaurant, like where you <laughs> like the hot to, dog stand. Yeah, where you like you people. allow the motherfucker. The hurry up and come get this dog. Shit. You gotta have one of those. <laughs> no, but you have to. You. It's I your mean, brand. But if we break it down to the fucking to the bottom, you have to understand that private property has to mean something. And if I don't want you How here. Come? It's stolen land anyway, motherfucker. Oh, my God, God. Kevin. It's stolen go. land anyway. Oh my God. You don't own it either. The Indians need to say something. Native Americans need to say something. <laughs> hey, 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 check yourself. Uh-huh. They need to say something. Uh-huh. You don't have a right to it either. It's, right. It, it so, ain't yours like it ain't mine. Right. So, goddamn it, give me some fucking coffee. No. Oh, my God. Get out. Anyway. And some, ma'am, give me some white-only pie. <laughs> some pie. I knew you were going to the pie. <laughs> some of that white-only pie. Man, look, I'm telling we, you. We, ma'am, we are hungry. <laughs> <laughs> you see they got their ass on, though. You got damn right. That's what you're supposed to do. They and did. it's not Maybe about. had a shotgun. And it's not about being a Police simp do too. or a sucker. Who does that? It's not about being a sucker. That is not, it, it's not your establishment. Go get some. Why would you even want to be there if they're acting like that? I agree with that. Well, I would I, just, if you're going to charge me for some fucking plastic wear, I don't even want to eat here. 
No, I mean, a lot of restaurants they have weird policy. Just threw that shit. No, that's don't do that because then that's that's criminal too. Like you throwing yeah, the food if you don't fuck, pay for oh, it. Oh, you gonna charge me for this shit? Mm. Oh wow! Now see now then, then you see what I'm saying? Then, this, yeah. this is what we have to deal with. This is why the police get called. <laughs> now I'm out. Now I'm I don't know now you now you get chased now, down the street. Yeah, now <laughs> now you've done something to the property and all. I ain't types coming of back to that shit. No way. Fuck them. But for real though, the titties lost in all this. The the, the, <laughs> the, the, the real victim here are those titties <laughs> or the guy whose titties those belong. The, you know what I'm saying? The guy whose those did t- belong to someone. God. She was, she was a, yeah. Okay. All right. So, you know, taking a totally different turn. I I I did an article for Upscale Magazine and um, because I think that I do I do pieces on relationships and Y'all didn't way, know Crystal is kind of a big deal Crystal's not a big deal but the relationships between black men and black women primarily for Upscale and um, I had some conversations with the article was birthed from watching Charlemagne's um, we talked about that his TV One Uncensored interview where he acknowledged being um, molested by, I think, I believe his uncle's wife or his uncle's ex-wife, um, uncle or cousin's ex-wife. And he acknowledged it happened when he was in elementary school. He didn't, he knew something was wrong, but he kind of enjoyed it. So he didn't tell anybody. Um, he, he did say the lady was hateful to him after a while. And so it stopped, but he never realized that, you know, he didn't think about it until he was older, that that was, you know, was really a messed up situation. Um, and then also comedian D. Ray Davis talked about, you know, some older women molesting him when he was younger. And I had a few, I had a talk to, I had an opportunity to talk to a few men that had gone through the same thing. And, um, actually you just showed a clip that um that I wasn't aware of of Mike Tyson acknowledging that he had also been molested um as a child and the point of the article was and I I want to hear you guys feedback on this men especially african american men or or men of color cuz I think there's similar um cultural traits in different minority groups maybe hispanics and things like that but there's this idea of overhyped masculinity and the fact that we don't really allow boys to share when things happen to them. Um, One of the guys that I talked to, he is from New York, you know, uh, really a big guy, imposing figure, and he, he admitted being molested by his babysitter when he was six. And he said, you know, he didn't tell anyone. He said he he was afraid. He did not enjoy it. It was a female, Um, but he was afraid and um, that no one would care, you know, because as a boy, you're supposed to be tough. And so uh, the babysitter, she would actually make him perform oral sex on her. And he's like, when you're a six-year-old, you don't know what that is. You don't, it's not, it's not cool. And then later you hear, you know that, well, men are supposed to like that. So I'm supposed to, I can't complain about something that other guys will be like, oh man, you were lucky. You know what I mean? So he, he you know, didn't share it uh, with anyone. Another guy how a, how a babysitter look too soon another guy acknowledged it happening from a, a stepbrother and so he felt obviously his manhood was challenged and so he became you know acted over acted out when it come to came to women but the both of them d- learned to distrust people and so within their lives uh, they carried this baggage that they were never able to share with anybody. Um, And it it definitely harbored a lot of distrust, one for women, another for men. The guy that was molested by a guy, he always felt like he had to go over and above and beyond to show other men that he was a ladies' man. The guy that was molested by a woman, he said he felt like he was always trying to prove to women that he was, he didn't trust women. It was just, it it left a lot of baggage that that men don't talk about. Um, And there were two other guys I ended up talking to for the article that had experienced that as well. So I want to ask you guys, do you think that, first of all, this issue is probably something that we is bigger than we than we talk about, right? And do you think that it is, I guess, big enough for people to need to kind of address it so that men feel comfortable and feel safe? Men that have been molested that are not in a live in a homosexual lifestyle. Because I think we hear a lot of men that are living a homosexual lifestyle come out and acknowledge this happened to them. But for a straight man that's supposed to represent this idea of masculinity, like someone like Mike Tyson, to admit that this happened to him as a child, 
it does something, you know, to uh, I guess society's view of him. Yeah. Or it could. This this is the first. This is not the first time. This is one of the times when I absolutely agree with how our ancestors were treated. A lot of times people say, you know, the reason why this is because of slavery. The reason why that is because of slavery or whatever. But this is one time where I absolutely feel like the reason why we're hyper masculine and overly mad and we feel like we have to prove something is because of that whole buck thing where they, you know, they break the buck. And I think that 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 trauma is genetically passed to us. You know what I'm saying? Even even though we're taught it later also, I think that that's gotten deep deep enough to where that was so that was so overwhelming that it's not something that we have recovered from and may mm-hmm. not for more many more years. I absolutely believe that that's why we're always having to keep it real and we're always trying to be tough and you know the the hyper masculinity. I believe that 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 is that is a real thing. And um, that is, it's just a shame because it doesn't allow us, like you were saying earlier, y'all, y'all actually could have it bad. And it's true. Guys don't get a chance to really show our soft side about things because what do you look like afterwards? Right. right. Like, I, I'll agree with you. I, I do think that there is, is some of it based in that um, because, like, when, when a woman is raped, she may lose a, a, a sense of, of safety, Mm-hmm. But she doesn't lose her femininity. Right. She doesn't yeah. lose her womanhood. When right. a man is raped, his masculinity is in question. tarnished. Yeah, in question. Right. Not, not I don't not, know if it's in question. I think I think what he's saying, it doesn't mean that you're gay. It means that you are able to be broken down. Well, well like, not, you well, not only that, it. you gotta keep in mind, like I think part of that hyper masculinity mm-hmm. is a a bit of a search for self. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like you, because I think all of us as human beings, we want to be our super selves, right? Right. Whether you've experienced that form of trauma or not, you want to be stronger, faster, prettier, better, yeah. richer, whatever, right? Um, and so when you are when you've been broken down in that way, then you over overcompensate in other ways. Right. Kind of like a, a a short man syndrome. Right. Right. Um I don't well where it's true that it may be or, or I do think it's in part based to, you know, what we what our ancestors experienced during slavery. I also in the in the current day our society doesn't take it seriously at all. We call when when men are abused in that way it's a joke. Right. We laugh. We did an entire me too movement for women and allow women to take the stage and to use their voice to get that out. But when men started to say, "Well, hey, I experienced this too. It was a joke. Well, I think, you know, in all fairness, it did take a that that Me Too movement for women even was a long time coming. Um, and for a long time, women were judged. Um, how you look and how you dress determine if that was something you deserved. You know what I mean? So it there's it's not like definitely it's it's taken time to get to the point for people to realize that a woman doesn't deserve to be raped or to be taken advantage of or to be approached uh, inappropriately based on if she's attractive, based on how she dresses. So we're just getting to that point. You know, Hollywood has all this baggage that people just now are saying, hey, this is not right. So it makes sense that there would be more to that story, that we would still need to evolve to get to another point to realize it's, you know, that we do need to take it seriously with men as well. I think that it is... It is it's sad, and I didn't realize, I can admit, I didn't realize as a woman, because my friend is saying, he said, Crystal, no one really cares if that happens to a little boy. It's not the same as a little girl. We're, we're, we try to protect little girls. Little boys, we tell them to be tough. Toughen up. Get over it. You're fine. You know, don't, don't think about it. And, you know, just all those situations were familiar, were similar they all had the same response that, you know, they didn't tell anybody. Mike Tyson admitted this for the first time. He's in 50. his 50s. Yeah. You know, and you could tell, like we were talking about, even from listening to him in that interview, he was 
it was almost like he was that little boy again, again going yeah. through it because he hadn't gotten it out. Even breaking. though he has a high voice, there's still a, could, a little bit more force You could hear the vulnerability. You could hear the vulnerability. Yeah, yeah, it was it was definitely. It. Down a bit and, and I think with women A lot of times You know I, I wrote this article Because a lot of times Women say that men We get upset Because men don't show Their emotions And it makes it hard For men to connect to us um, Or in relationships You know They don't show Their soft side And they don't That makes it hard For them to be In a, a healthy relationship Well Look at all this Baggage that a lot of men are carrying around You know If this guy does not trust women Because of something that happened to him at age 6 That he hasn't been able to share And he's now in his 40s Imagine the relationship That you know probably were destroyed Because someone didn't understand That baggage is there You know, well, Wow even imagine a guy In his 20s going to jail or prison yeah. And being an adult And still not being able to be masculine In that situation Because there's another guy that's more masculine Or yeah. a group of guys that are you know together So uh, there, and, because, and, and you know what Most men What I found out is that most men Are not emotionally intelligent Or, or articulate Enough to express that type of um, experience with and feel. I don't know if I want to say comfortable being vulnerable in that way because of the stigma that if you're a man, you have to be raw, mm-hmm. you have to be tough, you have to tighten yeah. up, right? Do but do you believe that when a man does show that he's going to get tried? I do. Yeah. I do too. I That's do. why I yeah. honestly I can't say that Absolutely. it's not true because I think that when you see that, like I can admit, I I think I told you this because I, I you know we've been friends a long time, but there was a guy that wanted to take me out, and he admitted to me that he had been molested by his pastor, and he shared that with me <laughs> as a friend, and and he wasn't gay, but then he wanted to take me out, and I can admit I was. Hesitant because of what he had shared with me And that's not fair And that's horrible Um, But I didn't know how to When he told this story to me I did not know how to respond You know, because I'm just not We're just not used to Being able to empathize And sympathize with a straight man If it was a gay guy I could, you know, treat him like I treat another girl But there has to be an acceptance And a safe place that we provide for men That are straight that are masculine, but but obviously still experience emotion, you know. And I think especially in our culture, you know, we, we gotta be mindful of that. But that because it has there there's no such thing as something just going away. You know, think of the time that Mike Tyson was acute, you know, was was tried and accused of rape. You know, it, it, statistics prove that when people go through um, when children are molested and go through sexual assault, they are they act out. usually yeah. the people that do that later. Even R. Kelly, we learned that R. Kelly was, you know, molested when he was younger. Smoke and fire. Nope. Um, so here's 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 the thing I was thinking of. Do you think that this happens often? You think this is something? I think it happens a lot okay. more than we think. Okay. So here's the here's the scary part about it though. Constantly, I'm hearing R. Kelly jokes. You brought him up. Constantly, I'm hearing about what kind of monster this guy is, and I'm not saying that he's not, but. At some point, we have to start recognizing that a lot of people who are calling him a monster mm-hmm. are probably just like him. If this happened right. to so many kids, I agree. That means there are a lot of adults doing this. I agree, mm-hmm. and I that agree. means that it's it's a lot more common than we than we like to think, and that says something about our culture. Even Chris Rock told jokes about that. Get keep, keep them kids away from Uncle Tony. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's not fun, and it's and and it's it's something we laugh about, but it's it's something that I think we haven't dealt with as a as a culture. I remember when um. Tyler Perry went on Oprah and he had all these men in the audience that had been molested. I think because people assume or people have, Tyler Perry has a reputation of being a certain persuasion, sexual orientation. He's not. He says that he's he's not um, gay and he's straight. But I think a lot of people assume because he plays these characters, the story, the issue may have gotten distracted in who he is, Right. But if so, where you see someone like Mike Tyson say, "I was molested by a man," it's like whoa. As opposed to Tyler Perry, who's playing a woman, who's doing all these things. Both are wrong. Neither one is more right or less. It's but 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 the but impact. I can see it. I could see it being expressed in different ways. Like ex- we yes. all know, we all know men that 
may not be gay, but they have feminine characteristics. Right. And so it, their gayness is like the elephant <laughs> in the room. Right. <laughs> right. But like with Mike Tyson, I can see it like in hindsight now, I can see it in his rage. I can see because Mike is the fiercest man I've ever seen in a <laughs> right. fight. Yeah. In a boxing if he, match. If he slapped my wife, it's like, damn. I got and a people decision made, to make. Made, like, made, jokes about <laughs> made jokes about that. Like I, oh, I got that. a decision to make. <laughs> Yo. My titties might be on the ground in Waffle House. <laughs> your, t- your titties may be on the ground. Hey. Titties can always end up on the ground. I'm never getting sucked again. No, but but um the the problem ends up being okay, so I still have a bias though. Even though we've talked about this and we we're all sensible people. I, I think you guys assume that, or think that I'm sensible too. But um I still have a bias. I don't feel like Charlemagne's situation and your friend who had the babysitter, I don't think that's as bad as Mike Tyson's situation because it was a man as opposed to a woman. Yeah, and I think that's I think that's sad though. You don't agree? I don't agree because So you think they're you think that they're equal. Well, I, as, as, I think that there's a said, bias, but I think they're was... equally bad because I think that if you talk to the, the the guy that was molested at 6 by his babysitter, he was introduced to sex far too 6-year-olds should not be having to perform right. cunnilingus. That is not most Adult men are not, at the, yeah. So not ready for it. Not ready for it. So it's, it it introduced him to something too early, and it left him scarred. And we assume again, we're saying that with a boy, if it was a man, it was something that was unwanted that could change. But it's still unwanted. It's yeah, still but, bad. But him putting his face in a vagina is not altering the way his booty hole is shaped. If Mike Tyson was raped by a man. That is penetration. Like a violent... You know what I'm saying? That's penetration. Yeah. There's tearing or whatever. It's taking from... What, okay. You see what All I'm right. saying? I still feel like, even though you're saying that, that that's the, they're the same, I still feel like there's a little bit of a difference when a man rapes someone as opposed to when a woman rapes someone. I, I th- and it may be a double standard, but I, I think that's I, just I a double standard. I understand, but that's because of yeah. anatomy. But I don't think that anyone is either less. I don't think that woman is less wrong. I don't think that man is more wrong. I think they're equally as wrong. But you because know, you're still taking someone's innocence and the fact of your physicality, because we don't, women don't have a way to penetrate, does not make it less wrong. I'm not She's talking still about the wrong. people. The people are equally wrong. Right. Okay, I'm talking that's about my the victims. Point. I understand. Okay, so with the victims. I, I still it's hate hard to, for me yeah. to give Charlemagne as much credit as I do Mike Tyson. You know what I'm saying? I want I want to give Say them both like equal credit, credit, but the bias I have a I, I can't help are you, it. Are you telling Charlemagne to toughen up? No, but I'm saying, come on, man, Mike Tyson got raped by a dude. So right. let's so talk, it ain't that bad. Toughen up. Maybe, maybe that's I, that's that's, I'm, that's I'm, the problem. Sorry, yeah. sorry. Is that no, what we're I doing? Think, but I think a lot of people are saying that, and I think that's why. Think about that. He could have been you in there with Fleece Johnson. You go through a situation and it, and it traumatizes you and you know that for the, because my friends, the majority of people would laugh and say, oh, you know, she, she, she did you a favor. You got to taste early. Those are the type of comments that a lot of men would make. I've, I okay. remember teaching first grade and my, one, of the, one of the parents in my class, I had a first grader. He had a four-year-old little brother. He had them watching Players Club. Because he wanted his boys to see that's what you're supposed to want. And I remember thinking, that's child abuse. That, sh- that movie was very sexual. A four-year-old does not need to see Angina. Do you guys remember Angina? Mm-hmm. A four-year-old does not need to see that. Well, good for you. I'm glad you don't. Well, but, I'll play it for you. <laughs> but a four-year-old, to me, when you're, when, you're, when you're showing a four-year-old pictures of that and saying, I want my boy to do that, that's... D- is is dysfunctional. But well, you know what? And and that leads to my point because I don't know that we really have many examples of what healthy male sexuality is. We don't. The stereotype of male sexuality is you fuck everything walking. And that as makes soon you as a your man. dick can get hard. Right. You fuck if she her too. Yes. Right. And if you don't, I, I was talking to a friend and he said if I'm able to go out and get as many women, that makes me feel right. like that, that's manly. And if manly. you're not doing that, you're you're less of a man. Right. Hell, I remember when I was in high school and I was getting teased because I was a virgin. Yeah. I remember that. Yeah. Like so You remember that in college that, too? That hey, was the culture. Stop it. What? Okay, stop it. <laughs> Do you remember that last stop year? <laughs> no, no, I said high school. Stop it. <laughs> okay. High school. Cut it out. Okay. <laughs> prom night. He lost, give, he lost his I got my stroke together night. later, but 
you know. See, you see, how he had, see, you see what then, he has to do. You see, he had to. He had to. I had to. Yeah, it's the way it is. It, and look, no, hold Relax, on. No, guys. I'm a man. I got to defend myself. He has myself. to. Let's just he have has a to. Because if I try him and he down. doesn't respond that way, that means every listener is going to try him. I'm going to continue trying him. You're probably going to start How trying him. How many times? Him. No. Not. Because people have watched this show. How many times has he tried me, even for being in Beyonce, being in the, the Come on, you, you played yourself. <laughs> is that not, is that, <laughs> most people would say that's a, 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 a feminine thing, right? Most he, people. Every chance he gets. <laughs> most people. Yeah. <laughs> I know, I know that there just seems to be a lot of rules to being a guy. Well, look, I remember I was, saying I, you, got damn you can't right. sit next to each other. You can't buy. I remember this, this guys in the studio were like, this one guy was like going to the store and the rest, and it's like, do you guys want anything? And one guy was like, bring me back some ice cream. The guy turns around. He's like, I'm, I'm bring not you bringing you no ice cream. Ice cream. What does yeah. that look like? A grown man bringing another grown man some ice cream. And man I'm like, are y'all serious? Man was man are y'all serious? Pause. Ice cream? Here, but it's like, well, let Crystal go get it. Like, I... Here's why toughen up comes to mind. And okay. I, I'm sorry, but it does. Because you didn't even get no ice cream cone, nigga. <laughs> yeah, for real. No, but look, you though. You want a popsicle? Have, have you ever been robbed? No. Have you ever been robbed? No. Okay, so I've been robbed. You knocking on wood? I'm knocking on wood, yeah. That doesn't work. Well, I did it anyway. I'll do it again. You mean like robbed, like face-to-face, a gunpoint? Yeah. That kind of? No, yeah. I haven't been robbed. Okay, yeah, I've okay. been robbed before. And... They tried you because you light skin. Probably, I mean, you know, it, it, it's probably. I don't, I don't know why. I didn't ask. I was, <laughs> I got him, put my hands by my back, why? and got arrested. I was like, hey, okay, whatever you need, hat, whatever, jacket, whatever, you got it. Right. So, but I feel like that's very similar to a six-year-old being forced to eat. What I do, I, I feel like there's it's something being taken from you. Okay, okay. you weren't able to. You, you, someone took control over you, and I, and I had no control okay. anymore. So. The, the response was toughen up. El, that's what my friends told me. And how could I not? Because mm. if I didn't, then that shows, oh, you I'm ain't really, you ain't made for this. You're not I'm, cut for be, this. Be honest, I'm sorry. For what? I'm, I, I'm sorry that you went through that. I'm sorry that that happened to you. Okay. That was not right. You were, you were a victim. You did yeah. not have to toughen up. Right. It wasn't I should have cried. Fault. And I should have No, 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 no. I'm trying down. to give you him did a, have to toughen up. Of course I'm I did. You no, absolutely have to toughen up. You are doing the same You know same why? Thing. And I am. I, I'm, and I'm right for it. You know yeah. why? Because you're a man. You'll have women <laughs> that you'll have to protect. Yep. You have to walk these streets. It is not church. Yep. It is the wild. Sound like somebody's grandpa right it now. Is, like, it is, yo. It is the wild. You got to protect these women. You can, as a man, you cannot be soft. Off out here in these streets, you have to toughen up, and that's why it's a different be honest, world. It's okay. No, that's why I try to tell y'all it is okay. You want a killer for a reason, you and he has to remain a killer. Did nothing wrong. I know I didn't do anything wrong. Yes, you, you did. You know what you did wrong? A victim. You, I let him take it. The number one, no, the number one rule <laughs> in the hood is don't get caught slipping. Yeah. You but got did, caught slipping. I did. But that, no. No, it no, got caught slipping. No, it was Kevin. totally my fault. It was not his fault. You didn't do nothing fault. else. No, it was my fault. It totally Don't was my fault. Don't get caught slipping. What kind of foolishness? New Jack hey. City. And it was on Martin Luther King Day Parade. Day. Where were you? Where were you? <laughs> Burger King down at Underground. Okay, so this, back in the day in Atlanta. Were you by yourself? I wasn't by myself, but I was with only one other person. It was a many of them. But the way the situation worked was, on this t- particular episode, um, <laughs> Burger King downtown at, at Peach, on Peace Street, the way it worked was downstairs was where you checked out and got your food or whatever. There was like maybe one or two tables there. Mm-hmm. But then all the seating was upstairs. Upstairs was one way in, one way out. It was Martin Luther King Day. So there was a parade that you we were You robbed of Martin Luther I King Day. I did. I did. God damn. We got upstairs and the lights were Ironic. out or something. But you know what I'm saying? There was really no way to get back. Once we got up there, there was no way to get back. It was nothing but niggas up there. So multiple niggas had guns, but it didn't even matter. They didn't even pull, have in to the pull. In the underground? The, no, it wasn't in underground. It was at on Peace Street outside of across from Woodruff Park. Is you know what that is? Okay. Like Bum yeah. Park. Yeah. Across from Bum Park. Um, that's where that's where that Burger King was. It's not there anymore. But it was, I mean, I put myself in a situation because one is a one way in, one way out. You already know, don't do that. Two, two, it was dark upstairs. But I we would have never have guessed that on Martin Luther King Day, during right after the parade, <laughs> that this was about to happen. This so, is not what Martin's dream was about. We both this got is- our hats took, we both got our, our jackets taken, like it was it was, you know, it's wow. what it is. Well, at least you're here. Well, I'm so glad that, he, that, you're, that you're here. We didn't get, we didn't get duffed, you know, snuffed out, so. Yeah. How did that, did that change your, the way you moved after that? Mm, of course, but I, I think I knew better that day. It wasn't like I was naive. It just happened. Like, I got caught that time. Like you said, caught slipping. That's mm. true. Mm. 
So I feel like it was my fault. Whether or not you say it's not. I'm- now who taught who taught you to if you if there's one way in, one way out, don't do that. Like how do you come upon that information as a guy? Like I don't know. I don't. I don't movies know or something. That. I don't even know where I got okay. that from. But I mean, it's logic. Like is that like a rite of passage it's as logic. a guy? I don't know. It's kind of. I don't necessarily want to say street knowledge. Well, the yeah, old heads, smarts. the old heads will tell you like you, you don't go to a club that's got one door. You know what I'm saying? If you go to a club, mm-hmm. make sure there's uh, multiple exits. Or you know what I'm saying? Like, See, I don't think that I told my son any of this information. You weren't. It, it wasn't your information. <laughs> but, well, make you, sure he doesn't ever wear a hat that some niggas you, want. You a woman? You don't exist in that environment. It was a brand new hat too. Hmm. You know, new era hats. You know how expensive. many people got robbed for their Jordans and I know. all type? I know. What? I know. Please killed. He crossed them legs. Pop oh, that wow. heel. So what you supposed to do? They say, "What size you wear, homie?" Like your size, nigga. Like that. No, doesn't work. You supposed to know. know. Matter of fact, <laughs> in, depending on depending on where you are, whether you're in New York or Detroit or Chicago or wherever, like you can't. Somebody can't even like make eye contact with you. That's suspicious. You trying to or or they speak. Hey, how you doing, man? How you doing, nigga? What you want? Like that's well, down south and, we don't do that. We yeah, don't. You don't not, have that kind not. of street sense. But yeah. if, if you can't, your sixth sense don't go off. Yeah, I did it one other time too. Now that I think about it, I didn't get caught this time. I almost got caught. <laughs> I was going to my girlfriend's house in another neighborhood. Of course, that's how it happens. And I was I got I got followed from Ashby Street train station, pretty much to right by Washington High School. I don't know if y'all know where that is. But it's probably a good mm, half a mile. Mm. They were following, they kept circling back in a car. And it was like four or five. I luckily got to my girl's mom's house just as they came back that last time. But they were, I had on like a, a, a starter coat too. They was going to get oh, that. Yeah. They was going to get that. It was like a Georgia Tech Parker. Like oh, the yeah, big, nigga. You was the like a big one. You was like a mannequin, nigga. Right. They were yeah. like, oh, shit. <laughs> Modeling the merchandise. Like, mm-hmm. But that's probably the only two times in my life that I've been caught slipping ever because we, we're taught not to. Hmm. That's interesting. But well, I feel like that situation is no different, even though I won't get credit for it the same way. No, you're not. I feel no. like it's no different because it's the it's the it's the 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 loss of of control. But you're it's saying, but think about of, that. Let's just let's just analyze that. You're saying that you got caught slipping. A six year old should have been do in anything. Right. Mike Tyson said he was in a dark a dark. Somewhere when he got Mike Tyson lived in the ghetto We don't know what He might have been walking home from school Who knows what it was Mm -hmm. This guy It was his babysitter So there's no It's not That's the problem We cannot blame the victim And I think that's what we've seen Happen so long with women Is Oh well you what, What did you have on? What did you do? I remember my mom told me before I went to college because there were a lot of girls that were getting um, raped in the athletic dorms. And she was like, girls, as a female, you have no business being with a group of guys by yourself, which is true. But my mom made it seem like those girls kind of deserve what happened to them. And that that idea and that that way of thinking is so is so hurtful and is so um, poisonous because what it does is it keeps people... Um, that are actually the perpetrators, it keeps them from having to take on the blame for their actions and yeah. it blames the victim. So saying, I can't get caught slipping, no, people should be robbing people in, you know, in the park after hey, the Hey, there's parade. a lot like, of things that shouldn't be happening that's in true, society. That's true, but I'm just saying that it's not the victim's fault. I can see saying protect yourself, but there's nothing that a six-year-old can do. There's nothing that a that a, that a, a boy that goes to church and his pastor is molesting him can do. Mm-hmm. And people find a way to totally ab- absolve, you know, perpetrators of their crime because we blame the victims. But you know what? Victim blaming, in as, as much as I get it, in a lot of ways, is some bullshit. And I'm going to say that because it don't have to be your fault. It wasn't his fault that he got robbed. Mm-hmm. It was his responsibility to but keep not, himself but talk, but, out of that talk, type of situation. But with sexual predators on children, there mm-hmm. is no room for that. There is no room for that. Right. A child but a child has the has the opportunity to not have that responsibility. They're a child. They're a child. But that's what we're talking about. Children, we're talking about so men being different. yeah, men being mm-hmm. molested when they're children. They have they 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 are a male 6-year-old child is just as defenseless as a female six-year-old child I and agree. we have to look at them the same and I think I a lot of times in our in our approach I remember watching my son play football <laughs> the year after he didn't want to play flag football he wanted to play tackle football he played tackle football got hit the snot knocked out of him mm-hmm. he starts take off the hood take out the mouthpiece and he's Hollering! I remember my ex-husband was like, <laughs> "Shut up!" You know, immediately like, 
And I'm, I'm like, sorry. I'm shaming him right now. I can't help it. You did. He's screaming. He's screaming at the top of his lungs. Don't he, he come did. on, man. It, it Boy, came you out get that like air knocked out of you. It was good. bad. One good time. Because he was quiet. I could tell the way he was like standing he off to the side, noise. but he was quiet. But we took the mouthpiece out and it was like Ah, like it just it just, it went out. Wow. It rang loud. But and and I remember my ex husband. He was not concerned about was if he was hurt. Yeah, he was like, like you shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up, push it down. Because yeah. they because they looking at you. They yeah. look. They are watching. Right. <laughs> He's like the only black boy on the team. <laughs> like you oh, surely. Wow. Right. <laughs> but I remember which mean that, they were probably gunning for him anyway. Right. Wow. But the point is that. He, a six-year-old little boy that gets hurt, is just, if it's a little girl, we sit there and kiss their boo-boo and, are you okay, mommy, kiss it and make it, like, there's no difference, you know, I don't understand we're preparing boys for something different, but I think we have to understand, especially when it comes to sexual predators, like, they're, they're victims, and men have to be able to feel safe. Sharing that because you cannot walk around for Mike Tyson to have walked around with that. Look at how many people mm-hmm. hit the mat, probably on and out, in and out Nigga of the lost boxing the ear. Hey. <laughs> like, you know what I'm yeah, like it's it that rage you never know went anywhere. But it, I also say that Mike Tyson embodied the responsibility that victim's responsibility. It happened to me once. It'll never happen again. But in the meantime, me, he raped nobody. someone else. He raped. He he became uh, a predator. That's debatable. No, I cannot with these people. No, Musically. why do you do that all the time? I'm just saying. Come on, now we know Mike Tyson was a rapist. Do we? No, I don't. I don't know that. I don't know that Mike Tyson rate. I don't I don't know that Mike Tyson, Tupac, Tupac Michael Jackson. Michael I don't know Jackson. that any of them raped anybody. Nah, you guys are just. Uh, I don't. You know what? R. Kelly. OJ I don't know that. OJ didn't kill anyone either. R. Kelly. I saw that shit on tape. <laughs> <laughs> it's the only difference. OJ didn't kill anyone either, right? I don't know. Did he? It doesn't fit. The glove didn't fit. <laughs> hey. And if the glove doesn't fit. But if fit, he did, no, I'm stuck. Right, 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 right. If he did. <sighs> <sighs> anyway. At, but you, at what point? At what age do? You have, like, a child is, again, allowed to be (laughs) irresponsible. They're a child. It's not irresponsible. They're not being irresponsible. They're just being a child. Mm -hmm. Uh Right. A child is allowed to do that. Okay. And so, hold on. Okay, so. But a, a, a girl gets drunk at a frat party around a bunch of guys that she doesn't know. They're gonna say the same thing. I was gonna say when she's 21. When she said a six year old boy, I thought she was about to say in a grown woman. What? You you said that a, a six year old. Okay. No, because like no, when, no. When hear me out. Students and teachers. He he's saying what I was what I was the joke I was gonna make. He's actually saying it now. We give grown ass women the same benefit that we give a six year old boy. You're saying that a six year old boy is defenseless to whatever. Y'all are saying, well, we're women. We're defenseless to men. No, mm-hmm. y'all are actually like me getting robbed. Y'all are some grown ass women. Don't put yourself in these positions because some of this responsibility. Does fall on your shoulders because you're grown. See, I now, set that up. That was if you good. get wow. if you get snatched out of your now, car, that's have... a different thing. Mm-hmm. But if you're drunk as fuck at a party, I'm not saying you're supposed to get raped, but you're not responsible for yourself any longer. Mm-hmm. You don't have all your faculties in place. Right. So if something were to happen to you, you're not in, in in any way in control of it. You're a six year old boy with his babysitter. I I I see what you're saying. I I see what you're saying. I think that. You know, it is it is everyone's as every adult's responsibility to put themselves in in, in positions um, that that or keep, keep them themselves safe, away keep them from safe. positions. Right. right. However, that does not mean that the people that do that are not wrong. So we are, are saying. So we are saying that they a six year old boy and a grown woman are are the same in that sense. Then. Any, any, anyone that, who violates you is in the wrong. Right, right. that's and, my and, point. That's and all you I'm accepting, saying. And you as the victim accepting responsibility for never letting it happen again doesn't mean that that person isn't still wrong. Right. But that means that you're saying right. that I'm not going to allow myself to be violated. You don't go back to the party that. and get drunk again. I, I, I don't disagree with that, but I am saying that I just want to make sure that we're clear. Yes, whenever you go out, I tell my daughter, I would tell any young woman, you do not want to put yourself in a position where you're not conscious of your faculties and you don't know where you are. You're around, you know, people that you don't know. 
that is not smart. It's not even smart to be drunk around people you do know because Most you times. don't know what will happen. It's but, not smart to be drunk if, you, honestly, if you unless you're at home or somewhere that's like home to you, right? right? A place where you're really comfortable. No, we're talking about we're talking about drunk. I'm not right. talking about having a drink or right. two. But we're talking I'm about talking to about the point where you're we're to, you're totally unable to know where you are. Yeah. You're you, you're gone. I don't I, get I drunk away from my house. A lady being raped. Um, during Mardi Gras, you saw it. I saw her wow. actually being raped, and wow. there were t- with two men, and and there were people walking by. They they had, they had pulled her into an alley, and I tried to, and my ex was like, "Come on!" It, it was people just walking by, like not paying any attention. But she was passed out, drunk. She had thrown up, which is weird, but you know, okay. She had thrown up, and these two guys pulled her into an alley and 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 raped her. Those guys were still wrong. You know yeah, what I mean? yeah, absolutely. This, you know, those guys were still wrong, but you're right. We do all have we do all have a responsibility. Wait a minute. To so you let but that was you let part this girl of the argument on the internet. I couldn't help it. I you was couldn't help away. her. Not I tried to raped? go back, but I was pulled away. And it was, I'm not buying it, Chris. Like, <laughs> I'm not buying it. You're complicit. It was down Canal Street. You raped a, that girl. I, you did. You're part of it. Uh, yeah. Uh, Wow! I will never get that image out of my head. It was horrible. Wow! You're a rapist. I didn't know that about you. It was very. I didn't know that about you either. Shit, Crystal. I don't know how we can continue. We got to just end this episode because now that I know this, I'm feeling I'm feeling away. You feeling away? Right. I don't know how to just tell people well, like, I, share, and subscribe. Like, can, how the fuck do you? What have you ever walked away from somebody being raped before? No. What the? Did she no. didn't she didn't hear that coming out the way that we are to come out? First of all, it was I. <laughs> I have never walked away from somebody being raped ever in my life, Crystal. What did you, what, what was I supposed to like, do? Like, what was that? Oh, I guess somebody getting raped. <laughs> That's all not time. funny. You guys are making it a joke. It's it's not oh, funny. it's not a joke. We're laughing because we don't know what else to do. I'm, <laughs> You're I'm really <laughs> shocked like, right I mean, now. what could I do? I tried See, what to we go back. supposed to do? I, mean, I we... tried to go back and help, but I, that's the thing. I would think a, a, man, a, a man could go over and Who stop are you it. With? I was with a guy. Fuck him too. Both of y'all are wrong. What is wrong with y'all? It was a street. I'm telling you, it was people. It was the the streets were crowded. There were people walking by. So many people saw that, and no one stopped. It was including amazing you. to me. I, <laughs> including I tried you. to stop. I did try to stop. We gotta tell them like share, share, and subscribe. Even still, no, but but I'm like, no one stopped though. Just no one stopped. No Batman. No Ninja Turtles. Nothing. Nobody. Just no Avengers. God didn't help her. Like, share, and subscribe. <laughs> Make sure you tune in. If you love the show, did, did share with somebody. Did you give her somebody. prayers and thoughts? <laughs> <laughs> you didn't, did you? He's jumping in. I'm not going to do it. You didn't, did you? Uh, Thanks for tuning in. <laughs> it's fucked up, man. We'll see you guys Say next week. Say hi to the bad guy. She's over there. <laughs> Music love life. <laughs> Shit gets interesting. <laughs> Got real. Sip my water. <laughs> Your alcohol is not alkaline. Music love life.